For the past several hundred years since the telescope's invention, people have been staring deeper and deeper into space, and also into the historical timeline of the universe. As technologies have improved, the way scientists view, photograph, interpret, and catalog data from the night sky has also improved. And the next step is taking place on the University of Arizona campus. Well, as telescopes have gotten larger over the years, and here we have a perfect example, the mirror underneath the tower there is a typical large telescope mirror of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And the mirror over there is a typical modern telescope. That's a four meter mirror. That's an eight and a half meter mirror. And as telescopes have gotten larger, their field of view on the sky has gotten smaller. So we've been looking more and more deeply at a smaller and smaller piece of the sky. And so one day, Roger Angel came into my office and said, Phil, I've come up with an idea for a wide field of view, a wide angle large telescope. Can you think of anything to do with it? And of course, immediately, finding supernovae came to mind and said, yes, you know, if we can look at a large amount of the sky, uh, then we can look at, uh, uh, tile the sky with images repeatedly, go back and forth, and if we have a big wide angle lens, it doesn't take very many images to cover the whole sky, and we can do this again and again and again and find all the supernovae. And the more we went into the science, the more we thought about what you could do with such a wide-angle, large telescope, the more we got excited. Fifty years ago or something, the Palomar Sky Survey was done with the best technology of the time then, and the only thing that could record these huge images were photographic plates. So they made a telescope and they had photographic plates this big, that one in there, and that made those first very important sky surveys that provided you know, the, the key to what the big telescopes should look at. Now at that time, electronic detectors were this big and not very good uh, and very expensive. But over the years, uh, CCD detectors have become bigger and better and more affordable. And by this time 10 years ago, it was obvious that you could make a detector this big, but now with CCD cameras instead of film. And CCD cameras are about 100 times more sensitive than film. But first, the telescope's mirror must be cast. 51,900 pounds of glass will be inspected by hand and carefully set into a 39-foot diameter spinning furnace. There's probably a dozen eight-meter telescopes around the world, all built in pretty much the same way with the primary mirror and then the small secondary mirror and then the instruments below. But that limits how big of a piece of the sky you can see at any one time. The field of view is 10 square degrees, and that's roughly 40 times the size of the full moon. Right. Normally, a big telescope would see a tiny piece of one small crater on the moon. If you take not a primary and a secondary, but you add a third mirror, so the light goes from the primary, goes up to a pretty big secondary mirror, comes down to a third mirror, and then comes to a focus sort of halfway between the primary mirror and the secondary mirror, then that allows you to have a much, you know, maybe a 10 times bigger field of view. And one thing we realized was that you could combine the main mirror and the light goes up to the second, comes down to the third. The third mirror could be part of the same piece of glass as the first mirror. So there's an outer ring of the big mirror, which first collects the light, goes up to the second mirror, then comes down for another shot at this piece of glass on the center mirror, which has a different curve on it, but it can be built in one piece with the, with the primary one. I think the plan with LSST is that the data pretty much becomes almost immediately available to the whole world through the web in the style of Google Earth and, and so on. So this too is a revolutionary new way to deal with the data from telescopes.